been involved in rebuilding the championship culture here? Um, I think it starts with obviously Coach Riley um, and the vision he has for uh, what USC can be, what it is, and, and you know how to bridge that gap from you know day one until whenever that you know end timeline is. I think it's uh, a process that you know, we all understand won't happen overnight, but there's no one in this organization that. Expects it to take forever, either. You know, I think we understand that the place that we're at and the expectation is to win and win fast, you know, as soon as that's possible. So we're going to attack everything with that mindset. Have, and and two parter, have the guys that were here embraced that, or have there been any issues there? And the second part of that is how have the new guys? influence that either the way they pick things up or the way that they've sort of influenced the guys who work here. Yeah, I think I think these guys have done a tremendous job you know, going all the way back to December, you know, when Coach got here. Um, I haven't felt any pushback. Um, I'm a very observative person. I, I, you know, I'm the head coach of my position group, but I, I pride myself in watching the team and trying to get the close of the team and things and everything I've seen is just guys that just want to move forward and be great this season. So that that is something that I think I was uh, pleasantly surprised getting here in the spring and then, you know, obviously bringing a number of guys in, specifically transfer guys, you know, that, I think that's the, the challenge is, you know, how will your team gel and mesh, but you know, I think the thing that those guys that came here shared that the guys already here had is everyone wants to win and everybody wants to win the right way and everybody wants to, you know, essentially do the same things. I don't think you transfer, you know, if, if that's not your expectation. So I think it's helped drive uh, everybody here. Um, I think it reminds the guys that have been here. And, you know, people want to be here, and it reminds the guys that are here, um, you know, hey, you made the change, now what are you going to do with it? And so, uh, I like the direction we're going. We've had the portal for like, what, two or three years now, but this sort of wholesale, have you ever seen anything like this sort of wholesale change? No, this is uh, definitely new. I mean, you know, players could always transfer. It's just a matter of you know, being immediately eligible, you know, to do so and things of that nature. And so the game has definitely changed uh, for sure as far as recruiting goes, uh, you know, because you have to think about retention long term when you're recruiting, um, which is honestly, I don't know if there's an exact way to predict that, you know, because everyone kind of, uh, you know, moves to the, to the beat of their own drum, so to speak. But, yeah, I think, I think it's changed the landscape of football big time. Um, but in the same token, I think we can use it as an advantage, too, uh, as far as turning a team over a roster over quickly. Um, and as far as, you know, uh, accelerating the, the competition level of the football team. So, I mean, I try to look at it from the positive side. Does it change the way coaches coach? I mean, when you, you, you mentioned retention. You have a roster, the guys you want to keep, you want to make sure that they stay. Is there, is there a certain way that you coach with retention in mind? Uh, you know, I think you have to be who you are. You know, and I think that USC football doesn't cater to any player. I don't think that's ever been uh, kind of the MO here, where the, the player is going to be bigger than the program. It's just, you know, that, and I think that, can and does happen in some places, but I, I don't think that'll ever happen here because of, you know, this place is bigger than us all, you know, and I think we understand that as coaches, and I think our players understand that, and, and anyone that is a part of this program understands that you know, we all are privileged to be here and be a part of this thing, so. Coach, how do you balance um, 
continuity and just familiarity with the team and players and everything like that versus talent and just the idea of, of adding a guy who, like Jim's saying, you know, comes in automatically and changes the, the look and feel of the program. Yeah, I mean, I think all those things are in consideration when you're bringing someone in, whether a freshman or a transfer, you know, how does this guy, you know, obviously I think the first thing you, you're going to go off of is their ability and talent, right? Because you're trying to enhance the team or, or you know, a particular side of the ball. And then that's where your homework and vetting and doing your, your due diligence, you know, is this person a good kid, you know? Obviously in the case of high school, we, we typically recruit these guys for a year, two years, three years in some cases. So you get to know them, you get to know what they're really about. I think it's a little trickier with the transfer guys, um, but you still do the same thing. You call coaches, you, you know, you, you're going to do your homework and know what type of person, you know, you're bringing into your family. So um, I don't think uh, talent will uh, supersede if there's an issue uh, off the field or, you know what I mean? It's a case by case. Obviously, Coach Riley makes that ultimate decision, or coordinators. But you know, you want to you want to add quality people, and we have. Well, there, there are times when you inherit a four and eight team, and that's like a broken team, right? Their spirits are broken. You have to kind of build them back up. Is that the case here? Did you feel like you were inheriting guys that you had to sort of reinstill a certain attitude, a certain confidence, whatever? Well, I think no matter you know what the previous uh, record is, when you, when you're new, you're new, and, and, and so you got to build trust just the same. Um, you know, not being here last year. It would be hard for me to say, you know, why the season went the way it went because I wasn't here, I wasn't on the inside, you know. But you look at what you have, you look at, you know, where you can be better, you know, enhancing uh, talent at certain positions, you know. And ultimately, coaches are going to do what they do. You know, we, we believe in our system uh, and what we do on all sides of the ball. And guess what? The last coaches did it too, you know. And so I think it's our challenge to constantly evolve and, and, and make changes and do things based on what our players can do and what they are good at, you know. Um, I've seen a lot of teams and I won't name organizations, but they've changed who they are when they take the field based on a game of football changing or maybe the quarterback position, or maybe, you know what I mean? So you gotta adapt, you gotta be adaptable. And, um, and so we've tried to do a, a great job of really focusing on the now and where we're going and, and not, you know, because it doesn't do as much good anyways to to look back. We have a saying, uh, burn your past, you know, because it can be a, uh, you know, a hindrance. And at best, you know, it slows you down. So we kind of had that mantra on defense a little bit, just burn your past on to the next one. So. What have you learned about Corey and your time working with him? I've learned that uh, he's a very naturally gifted uh, football player. And I say naturally gifted, you know, sometimes, you know, you attach um, ratings and things, but I mean, I played football my whole life, played in the NFL. Like, when I'm saying gifted, I'm saying things that are natural, you know what I mean? Things that you kind of, you know, can do. Like, man, just little things, you know. It's not the, you know, oh, he runs a, you know, four whatever, four to the jump. It's it's for me. It's how a guy can move and bend and, and do certain things, and how powerful he is in very very short areas and things. Things that you don't always see on a highlight, but you see when I get a chance to work with him in individual and things. And, and so I'm really excited. He is just like any freshman. All right, freshmen struggle their first year. Two stars, three stars, four stars. There are not many kids that come out of high school and they go to college at this level and have a ton of success. There's not. I mean, that's on any team in any organization. It's a hard transition. Um, and so he's no different than, you know, any freshman that's come in and trying to, you know, figure it out. Um, you're trying to mature. You're trying to learn what this thing's all about, and, you know. I'm excited. I really am to get a chance to coach him this fall and 
you know, get him in his sophomore season and see what he can do out there. So. You can see that five-star potential in him still? Yeah, but I don't, you know, my thing is I, I'm, a, I'm not a star guy at all because I wasn't a, I was a two-star coming out of high school and I went to the NFL, made a team, and I didn't play 10 years, but, you know, I kind of, you know, there's a, there's a label, you know, what you should be, but ultimately you decide what you're going to be, you know, not a, a, a label. Um, and oftentimes we attach that and put expectations, but, you know, the reality is we're going to recruit the best players we can here at USC, and we're going to challenge every one of them to be their best, and we're going to challenge them to be their best as fast as possible because we're not in the business of having a whole lot of time anymore in college football. We got to win. We got to win now, and especially with transfer portal, players got to accelerate their, their uh, development, and we have a huge part in that. So. But uh, he, he's a talented dude, yes. <laughs> Coach slow by the knee injury in the last month in the spring. When was the first time you saw that natural ability just pop? Was there, was there one moment that stands out to you? Um, you know, it, it's really easy to see uh, when you coach, you know, and, and you have such a reference point of so many players and how guys at certain sizes move versus another guy. Um, but I will say there was one day in spring ball he, he just was playing like lights out. It looks like the game was kind of I equated to like when a an NBA guy just gets in the zone and everything's going down. Like he had a day and, and I was like, now that's it right there. Man. That's how I got to get him playing every day. And I told him that day after practice, I said, hey, tap into that because that was it. That's what it's going to take. Right to, to be a guy here, right? But not in spurts, because any defense can have a great game, any quarterback can have a great game, any DB can have a great game. But to be elite, you got to do it every day. You got to do it every game. You got to be consistent. So, but uh, he, he he's got that it factor. We all know that. So. Once you come to a new program, new players, and everything, what's maybe a, a consistent or, or a tradition that Lincoln brought over that, you know, from one day to the next, you saw, you know, a consistency in from program to program? Um, this may sound redundant, but Lincoln Riley and, and, and this staff are on one accord in terms of what's expected out of us. I think that's, you know, at the last place that's here. Wherever we go, there's going to be an expectation to win. That that does not fall on any deaf ears. That, irregardless of you know winning four games last year or whatever, our mindset is we we got to win every game. That's how we prepare. That's how we recruit. That's how we practice. There's no such thing as get better. There's no well, we won eight games. That's better than a year ago. Eight games isn't going to cut it. Well, we won 10 games. That's not going to cut it. Right? Well, we played and it, we made it to the championship game, but we didn't win it. Like, that's the mindset. And everybody says that, but again, if you looked at Coach Riley's resume and what he's been able to do as a head coach, you know, his expectation is, you know, extremely high. Um, and the guys that he has around him, I think that's one thing we, and I mean is we share that. There's no more victories on our staff. Everybody understands, like, like we all have to be the best at what we do, right, especially being here, and, and, and get the most out of our players, and that won't change. So what, what's the development been like since the end of spring to, uh, you know, going through the summer workouts now with fall camp starting tomorrow? Yeah. It's cool, man. Those guys are, like, walking around with their shirts off all the time, and, <laughs> You know, you kind of talked about confidence. You can tell they are confident right now. Um, and some people say, well, you haven't done nothing yet, but I always equate confidence to, I know I have put in the work. You know, sometimes the result is not always indicative of, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, a confidence thing, you know, you know it's like, 
those guys, they feel good right now. I can tell as they trickle them back in here now, they're ready to go, and so are we. And so um, I think from a development standpoint, these guys have worked their tails off all summer. Uh, they're getting closer as a team just each and every day. These guys are kind of you know, getting on the same page. And now, now is the real challenge because now you're going to practice, you're going to put on pads, we're going to grind them, obviously, in training camp. And then, you know, you're going to actually play someone in a different color jersey. And then you're going to have some adversity, and that's coming. It's coming, right, because it always does. So, you know, we're going to see what this team is made of. But we're going to take each day at a time and just focus on the now and, and, and meet those challenges. Something Corey was talking about was how he wanted to try to adopt, like, a professional mindset coming into his sophomore year. How important is that for players, especially as kind of touted as he is as a freshman, to shift that mindset? It's like, I'm not the big big dog anymore. I've still got to keep working. Yeah, I think all those freshmen, especially those you know, five-star guys, they all go through that. Uh, yeah, hey, not, and, and not saying you don't prior, but how many times does a five-star uh, player get critiqued, right? Or he's the reason a play went bad, right? And so a lot of those things are really just new for those guys when they step on campus, you know, um, and, and, and they have to go through a, what we call that inner battle, man, of kind of figuring it all out. But, uh, and you aren't the, you are the low man on the totem pole again. Stars or not, and we always, you know, had a saying: those stars don't matter anymore. That's that's what gets you here. That's not what makes you what you need to be here. That's just that part of it. But uh, yeah, that that that's a key key thing is uh, that development and, and, and uh, you know finding your way. And you know, I think that when you come into a better culture, that's an easier thing to to navigate through. You know, as far as being a pro. I'll say this, I think that anybody that we bring into this program, we, we have the expectation that they should be a pro one day, right? Um, but in his case, you know, sometimes I caution against looking too far ahead because you're 18 years old. You need to be a freshman. Just focus on being a freshman. Don't worry about so much the end and where you want to be and you got to focus on the now and the moment and be where your feet are uh, and, and it's more of the process that's kind of how I'm wired and less about you know where you're going All right, we, we understand where we're going but we got to focus on the process to get there or we're missing so. You talked about how, the, oh, uh, how things change the cultural ball change with the transfer portal yeah. how's recruiting changed with you know, and talk of NIL all the time going on. How, how much does it change your job recruiting? Uh, it's it's the wild, wild west, you know. <laughs> it's uh, no pun intended. I mean, it's it's different, you know, because, uh, you know, in my opinion, recruiting was very, very much relationship-driven, um, kind of always has been. Again, you know, once you get to this level, a lot of us have nice stadiums and, you know, and, and different things, and not every program is equal. But that relationship has always been something I think that most coaches, you know, would, would, would pound the pavement and say, hey, I got a great relationship with this guy. I got a great chance to get him or to sign him. And now I think once you add that NIL into it, I think that changes things because, you know, and that's the way of the world. Anytime you involve money into something, it just changes the dynamics. It just does. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it changes the dynamics. Um, and so I think we have to evolve with the times and with what's going on in college football. We, we're all for it uh, in terms of players having opportunities to you know, make money or capitalize off a of name, image, and likeness. And, uh, and we're going to adapt and do whatever needs to be done to make sure we keep this program at the standard it needs to be. So. Um, they don't list outside linebackers on the roster anymore. It's like all inside linebackers or the, the <laughs> rush. Like, who's, yeah. who's in your group now? Who sure. Would be like, yeah. Yeah, and we and we call our outside linebackers the rush uh, position, but um, 
Corey Foreman's there, Romello Heights there, uh, Taylor Cattola is there. Uh, just moved Julian Simon from inside to outside after spring, so he'll be in there. Uh, Solomon Bird, uh, who joined our team, obviously, uh, he'll be there. And then Garrett uh, Pomerantz is also in the room. So um, we got a good room, good mix of guys. Uh, you know, some guys that's uh, had some playing experience, you know. But I think the, the, the thing I'm most excited about, I have an eager room because guys in my room are, are just itching to prove you know themselves and, and really assert themselves and solidify themselves as, as real guys and real dudes. So there's heavy competition in there, and I love it. So. Right. Has there been conversations about Gentry? You know, he's you know, six six, kind of just a unique body. Has there been conversations about him like doing some reps in outside linebacker or a rush position and inside linebacker because he's probably do both things? Yeah, I think it's 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 obvious. I mean, he's a like you said, six six, long dude, super athletic. If you see the film play obviously a year ago uh, I think you have all those conversations about all those guys um, you know I hate to say it but like like nothing is kind of final you know what I mean you're always reevaluating your depth and your roster I mean like daily you know uh, and you're trying to figure out you know who you know what's the best version of this player in what position you know he's, he's his best version at or you know kind of where can he help the most but you know, I, I don't think it's, uh, you know, ever a case where a guy, you know, may only do one thing his whole career, especially when you're talking about the front seven where body types are very similar now between linebackers and uh, or rush ends or DNs, outside backers, you know. Uh, essentially, everybody's looking for fast and urgent and, and guys, but I think, you know, what separates the most of the guys in my position is the ability to, to rush the passer. Um, and so if someone can do that, then we're going to obviously take a look at that or, you know, maybe create a package. If it's a certain guy that, hey, he's dynamic as a pass rusher, we'll figure it out. And so uh, this is a starting point, and we'll see how it goes as camp goes.